Hi class, this is going to be chapter 14. I added some pictures of my travels to India a long, long time ago, so I hope you enjoy. Here we go. South Asia. So this is a map of South Asia. It includes India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Sri Lanka, and Nepal. Immigrants from South Asia, mostly from India and Pakistan, comprise one of the fastest growing populations of the U.S. The population of India currently has about 1.2 billion people, which is four times as much as the U.S. And the climate of this region is varied from jungle to mountains to desert. There are about 300 languages spoken. Pakistan has the most rugged territory in the world. It has Mount Kilimanjaro, K2. And there are fewer than 50,000 Sri Lankans, Nepalese, Bhutanese that have immigrated to the U.S. so far. Immigration patterns. Since 1965, the majority of South Asian immigrants are from the upper middle class. This is different from other immigrant groups because they already know English. And the first immigrants from India were the Sikhs. The Sikhs are a religious group, and they faced a lot of religious, a lot of discrimination when we immigrated here. They mostly came to work on the farms and the railroads in the 1900s. There's also been a lot of Muslim immigrants. The caste system. I'll have you guys watch a little videos on the caste system, um, but I'll go over it here. I apologize if I slaughter some of these words, but I'll do my best. The caste system in India is a Hindu method of ordering individuals for their role in society. And it was actually very likely structured by the British, who originally had control over them. So there are four castes. There are the Brahmins, which are the priests, the Kshatras, which are the soldiers, the Vaishras, which are the merchants and farmers, the Sudras, who are the serfs, and the untouchables. And the untouchables are considered so unpure that they are untouchable. Currently, there's laws discriminating against this caste, the untouchable caste, but they do still exist. World view. So majority of Indians are Hindus and follow Hinduism. Um, there are many Hindu temples and Hinduism was developed in 1500 to 2000 BCE. There are quite a few Buddhists. There are people who follow Jainism. Jainism believers feel that all living things have souls and people should wear masks to prevent breathing in insects because they don't want to kill them. They should also sweep a path in front of them to prevent stepping on any creatures. Some are Sikhs, like we said. Sikhs believe in a single God. They wear a turban. They do not cut their hair. Um, they wear short pants, a steel bracelet, and a saber. Some are Christians, only about 3%. Some follow Zoroastrianism, which there's a picture of the Zoroastrian God, and he's the God of fire. Some follow Judaism, and some follow animism, which believes in polyandry, which polyandry is having more than one husband, and headhunting. Family life. Asian Indians. Um, usually the wife doesn't work and is supposed to cook and take care of the family. Children are expected to show respect, Arranged marriages are very common and dating is uncommon. Pakistani, very patriarchal society. The husband earns money, the woman shops and raises the children. 
traditional health beliefs and practices. I believe in Ayurvedic medicine, and Ayurvedic medicine is established um, with the humoral concepts of the body, and it's based in Greece, and it has actually evolved into what biomedicine is today. Ayurvedic translates into longevity and the science of knowledge. They also have many herbal remedies. This is a picture of an aloe vera plant. They feel it can treat obesity and liver disease. Staples. Let me ask you guys about some staples. So it's difficult to generalize about Indian cuisine because of the diverse geography and the heterogeneous population of the country. There are few foods that are eaten throughout all of India, so there's just a really large variety. Some foods that are common are things like ghee. And what is ghee? Ghee is purified, clarified butter. So that's a picture of ghee on the bottom left, and it's clarified butter. They also eat rice. May I ask you how much? On average, the average Indian eats half a pound per day of rice, and they prefer long grain rice. Dal. Dal is the Hindi term for dried beans, peas, and lentils, and it's also the name for the dish where they are boiled and seasoned. So on the picture on the right is dal. So let me ask you about some of these things. Staples of India. Curries are very common. They usually have chili, turmeric, black pepper, cinnamon, cardamom in them. There is a lot of variety between the northern and southern regions. So I might ask you about some of this variation between the north and the south and what is eaten and what are the cooking methods. Cooking method of the north, boiling, stewing, and frying. The north also prefers wheat. It's a cooler climate. The south, cooking method of the south is steaming. And in the south, they prefer rice. There are many very many vegetarians in India. Let me ask you about this also. It's estimated that 30% of all Indians are strict vegetarians and abstain from all meat, poultry, eggs, and fish, but do consume some dairy. Staples of Pakistan. So it has a lot of India and Arab flavors. They use many spices. Um, legumes, they use chickpeas and lentils. One of their specialty dishes is called uh, rice malai, and this rice malai or ras malai is a rich cheesecake without the crust. I may ask you what this is, it's called ras malai, and that's pictured in the upper right, and that's a very popular dessert. Northern India. Northern India has a lot of Muslim influence. They have very lavish fare. They like basatmi rice. They like meatballs. They like korma. Korma is a curried dish with nuts and yogurt, thickened sauces. Um, they like masalas. They like saffron. Their name for bread, I'm going to ask you about bread. Bread is called roti, R-O-T-I. And they have whole wheat flatbreads, deep fried breads, griddled breads, leaven breads, and they call it roti. And then paneer is actually pictured as part of that soup looking dish. Paneer is the white chunks that look like tofu. And paneer is a cheese made from buffalo milk and it's added to many dishes or skewered. I'm going to ask you what paneer is. Regional variations. Tandoori oven. So tandoori is the name for the clay oven that's used. Tandoori cooking is often used with chicken or lamb. They marinate the meat in a spicy yogurt sauce before cooking it, and they also cook the non breads in a tandoori oven. These are some videos about tandoori ovens. Other things, um, sweet and sour dishes are commonly cooked and called kokom. Regional variations. Let me ask you guys about these. So, seafood is very common, they put it in just about everything. They have something called bapa, which is the orangish looking dish on the top right. And this is steamed packets of fish that are seasoned with mustard seed and spices. Um, on the left, let me ask you about this. Bombay duck is on the left. Bombay duck is not a duck at all, but it's a dried salted fish 
that's very thin and bony that they like to in eat, enjoy and eat. And then Vindaloo is on the right. And Vindaloo is a hot and sour pork curry that's seasoned with coconut, vinegar, and tomatoes. Regional variations, Southern India. So in Southern India, they have many steamed and fried rice dishes. They like rosmata rice, which is a red rice with a smoky flavor. They eat sambar, which is pureed dal. So at the very top, I have a picture of sambar with vegetables. It's pureed dal. And then they eat papadams, which is at the bottom left. These are thin, crispy fried breads that they cook. Um, they also enjoy something called jalebis, which are at the bottom right. And those are syrup-soaked orange-colored pretzels that they cook. So I'll stop here for now. So I traveled to India a long, long time ago before the time of digital cameras. Um, I think I was about 21 or 22 years old. And this is a picture of me in a traditional sari. This is some Indian street vendors. They're selling pupusas, which were like fried, um, breaded, different vegetables, such as potatoes and carrots and onions and sometimes meats. This is a man with fresh fruits and vegetables on the street. This is another man uh, with his cart going to market to sell fresh fruits and veggies. There was tons of fresh fruits and veggies there. Many people traveled by foot or by bikes. They're very, very active. I didn't see any overweight or obesity when I was there. And then this is a picture of me with my mother and father. Uh, we are at an Indian restaurant. We're eating tandoori chicken, which is the red chicken on both of their plates. And I was having buttered chicken, um, which is made with some saffron seasonings and is very rich in flavor, as well as with basami rice. Um, and you can see that I have a Diet Coke. I'm super guilty of that. But even in India, you know, this was 15 years plus ago, we were able to go to a restaurant and I was able to get a relatively American thing, a Diet Coke. Um, there was obviously traditional beverages available as well, but I was a little stinker back then. These are some additional pictures I took. Uh, this is one of the members of the Untouchable cast. You could see how he's dressed and many of them were dressed this way. And then I know that the other picture is horrible in quantity, but or quality, but it's my mom and dad and one of our guides and a cow just eating some trash and leftover food on the street. And this was common to see. We would see cows everywhere we went, um, middle of the road, street at night, you name it, because the cows were sacred and so they were not killed or used for food. All right, now back to the show. Regional variations in Pakistan. So again, tandoori oven, which is that oven cooking is very popular. They'll use a karahi. A karahi is that pot that's on the left-hand side. So it's a deep cast iron pot that's shaped like a wok. They often fry foods in it. Fish is very common. They'll kebab it, they'll steam it, or they'll curry it. And something called saji is very common. Um, saji is like rotisserie. So you can see saji pictured around that fire there. And they'll skewer whole chickens, whole lambs on a pole. Then the poles will be inserted into the dirt around a large fire, and the poles are rotated by hand. Religious variations. Hinduism. Hindus believe that eating is part of a spiritual journey and each caste is associated with certain foods. So Brahmins were typically vegetarians, Kashaitras consume meat, Sutras only ate meat as leftovers. Muslims, may I ask about these? Muslims avoid all pork and pork products. Are they vegetarians? Most are vegetarians, but some eat other things. Sikhs, so Sikhs limit alcohol and they limit beef. And then Jains, the Jains have many prohibited foods. They believe water must be boiled. They do not eat any blood colored foods, such as watermelon or tomatoes. They do not eat eggs. They do not eat tubers or root vegetables. Meal composition and cycle, Asian Indians. So typical is two meals a day. Usually have breakfast between nine and 11. Um, between four and five, they'll have another small little snack, and then between seven and nine, they'll have their main meal. So what follows breakfast is a snack, and the main meal of the day is at night, between seven to 9 p.m. It's kind of their dinner. 
What do they drink? Let me ask you guys this. Um, also about the main meal. They like to drink water. It's the most common drink. And they also like milk and buttermilk, as well as some fruit juices. They do not eat a lot of, or they do not drink a lot of alcoholic beverages, but sometimes they have rum. All the courses are presented in the same time. There's no sequence, so dessert could easily show up at the main meal. And snack is popular. Snacking is popular, and they use the word tiffin to distinguish a snack from a meal. Meal composition, Pakistanis. So breakfast is usually light, and they have many flatbreads, porridges, and legumes. They typically eat two meals a day, lunch and dinner. Snacking is common among Pakistanis. And how many meal, how are meals served? So meals are traditionally served on a large tray, kind of like what's pictured here. They have a large tray in front of the man sitting down. They're eaten with the hands while sitting on the floor. That's how they're traditionally served. Feast days. They have many feast days. They're very important. And no occasion passes in India without some sort of food observance. They say that devout Hindus are either fasting or feasting almost every day of the year. A few holidays, they have something called Holi. And during Holi, they throw colored powders up in the air. People snack at bazaars. During Diwali, this is pictured here. This is the Festival of Lights. They eat many sweets. And they have many non-Hindu festivals. Festivals dedicated to the rice and the wheat harvests. Special occasions. So fasting. Fasting may include just avoidance or a single of a single food or abstinence from all food. So an example of fasting would be even being vegetarian for a day. During Ramadan, let me ask you about Ramadan. Ramadan is a holiday that celebrates Allah, and they do not eat food or drink between sunrise and sunset. Role of food, purity and pollution. So in a society that traditionally experienced frequent famines and chronic malnutrition, food is highly valued. They have something called jati, and jati is a Hindu classification system used to evaluate the relative spiritual purity of all foods. It's determined by the ingredients, how they're prepared, who prepares them, and how they are served. Under the system of jahi, milk is naturally pure. Raw foods with a husk, such as like bananas or corn, would be less susceptible to pollution. Paka foods are foods that are cooked or fried in fat, um, and they're unrestricted to purity. They're appropriate for serving in temples or communities because since they're deep fried in this fat, they're considered very pure. So paka foods are very pure. And then juta, let me ask you about these foods. Juta foods are foods that are polluted, and examples are alcohol and meat, leftovers, and garbage. Asian Indian women and food. Let me ask you about the woman's role of cooking. The woman is responsible for overseeing the procurement, storage, preparation, and serving of all meals. Since many women have arranged marriages, if they have proper kitchen training, they're more likely to get a good marriage offer. If the mother cannot do it, the daughter or the daughter-in-law will do it. And it's believed that women impart a special sweetness to the foods. So how this affects marriages, a, a good cook is more likely to get a good marriage. Etiquette. Traditional etiquette. So traditionally, only foods cooked and served by a member of an equal or superior caste can be consumed by any Hindus, and only members of the same caste could eat together. This isn't happening quite as much as usual or as it used to um, because of restaurants and food servers, etc. Food is served in tallies. Those little metal dishes are tallies, so they're small individual bowls. They're usually silver or brass, and only the right hand is used in dining. Therapeutic uses of foods. Balance is important for digestion and emotional stability. They think good digestion is critical be because food is transformed 
into the body humors and substances when it's cooked by the digestive juices. Food that is indigestible, they believe to be harmful. They do believe in the hot and cold system. Hot foods um, might be wheat, spices, seasonings. Cold foods might be rice, leafy vegetables, fruits, dairy, and honey. Cultural adaptation, South Asia. So there are more cheese and more ice cream eaten. Decreased fruits and vegetables. Um, American style breads and cereals are very popular. Beverages, increased soda and coffee, alcohol, wider accepted. Fats, they don't always have ghee, so sometimes they will purchase it and it's made from vegetable oil instead of butter. And candy and sweets are often enjoyed as well as cookies. More cultural adaptations. Some vegetarians stop being vegetarians and become meat eaters or will add chicken, eggs, or fish to their diets. Men change habits quicker than women because it's the woman's role to prepare the traditional food, so they're still usually cooking. And sometimes lunches are very fast. Sometimes they're things like pizza or sandwiches. Nutritional status. Higher fat intakes in the US than India. BMI of Indians is low compared to the US. Um, but often Asian Indians who are not overweight do have high amounts of abdominal fat, and this is considered harmful. They also have metabolic syndrome and sometimes um, low levels of the good cholesterol. And conclusion this is the end of chapter 14. All right, class, thank you for listening, and I'll see you next time. Bye.